Hi guys, in this episode we're going to be talking about level metrics, so stay tuned. All right, so today we're going to be talking about level metrics. And the first thing I want to show you is a simple metric, the default metric uh, with the report level. So as you can see here, we have a simple metric, sum of revenue. So let's take a look at the level. It's a default report level. Okay, This is the metric you're going to be working with most of the time. This is probably what you've already seen already and most of what you'll be working with. Okay, So default report level, standard filtering, standard grouping. Let's take a look at what that looks like on a report. Okay, now let's take a look at this report. So first we'll look at the filter. Simple filter for the year equals 2015 and the region equals northeast. And on the report template we have region and call center. So as you can see this metric dynamically adjusts based on your report. So it will filter everything for the year 2015, region northeast, and it will group by whatever is on the report. So in this case call center. So Boston has 507,000 in sales and New York 2.3 million in sales. And again, this will dynamically adjust based on your report. So if I go ahead and remove call center, now you see it aggregated to the region of Northeast. So that is the default report level. Now the next thing I want to show you guys is how a metric behaves when no level is specified. Okay, so if you take a look at my screen here, I have the same metric, a sum of revenue, same one we looked at before, only I've removed the, le the leveling. So there is no level specified here at all. There's no report level, no targets at all. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like on a report. So I'll go ahead and run this. Okay, so this first metric here this is our typical metric that we looked at before with just the report level set. And as you can see, it's dynamically adjusting to what's on the report, and it's aggregating for Boston, New York. But now we look at the metric on the right, and this is where I have not specified any level at all. As you can see, it's repeating the total for every row. Now to give you a better idea of how this is being calculated, let's go ahead and take a look at the SQL. If you're not familiar with SQL, don't worry about it. But for those of you who are, let's take a look at how it's doing this. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is the report level metric. Now, as you can see, because call center was on the report, it's grouping by call center. All right, so there's a group by on call center and the sum of revenue. Now, if we scroll down a little bit further, as you can see here, this is the SQL for the metric that has no level specified. And as you can see, there is no group by. So it's just summing all the revenue for everything returned by the database okay based on your filter so that's what a metric how a metric behaves with it, with no level specified okay now we're going to get into level metrics a little bit more and let's show you what it actually looks like when we add a target to a level so for this example we're going to use region Okay, so I'm going to take region, I'm going to drag it over to our level, and for now I'm just going to leave the filtering and grouping set to standard. Okay, so let's save and close that. And let's take a look at the impact of this on a report. So we'll go ahead and run this. Okay, now in all these reports, I'm going to leave this default metric on there for comparison reasons so you can see the change that adding these levels makes. Okay, So that's what this first metric is. This is just says the default report level and as you can see it's dynamically adjusting to what's on the report and grouping by call center. Okay, And also taking into consideration my filter of course as well. Okay, Now the metric on the right, this has the target set of region with standard filtering and standard grouping. So it is going to take into consideration my filter. Okay, However, since the target is region and region is on the report, it is going to group by region. So as you can see, this 1.58 million is the total for the Mid-Atlantic region. 
Now, because we also have call center on the report, okay, it's going to repeat that total for every row, okay? And as you can see, the 2.8 million, this represents the total for Northeast, and that gets repeated for each row, Boston and New York, okay? Northwest, again, total is 600, about 600,000, and that gets repeated for each call center. All right, the next thing I want to show you guys here is um, how a metric behaves when you combine targets and report level, all right, and how that works. Because you might be wondering, well, what happens if I remove report level and leave the tar and leave just a target? What happens if I have a target and leave report level? What, how, how, does all, how does all that work? Um, so let's take a look at an example here. So for this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the region target, okay? And I'm going to add something totally unrelated to anything on my report. So let's go into products and let's add supplier. Okay. Now supplier is not going to be found in my filter. It's not going to be found on the report template. So essentially it's going to be an unrelated attribute, right? That's not related to anything on my report. So let's see what happens here. Let's see how this behaves. Save and close that. And then we'll re run my report since we changed the metric. And okay, all right. So I want you to take a look at this. Now this first metric, as with all the reports I'm going to leave in here, is default report level. Okay. The second metric, this is the metric where I set the target to supplier. Okay. But I left the default report level there as well, so that both were on the report or were specified in the levels. Okay. Now if you notice, it matches exactly. So it's behaving as though since supplier is not related to anything on my report, it resorts to using the default report level. So it's, it's, and that's why the numbers are identical to a metric with only report level. Okay. Now the flip side of that, if let's see what happens when we remove the report level and just leave the target supplier. Okay. Now you may be able to see what's coming here, but let's show you. Save and close that. And we'll have to save and close and rerun this since we changed the metric. Okay. Now you'll see it repeated the total for every row. So this is the total for all the regions. Okay, so it's behaving as though there's no level at all. So it's essentially disregarding the supplier level, of course, because there's nothing it can do with it. It's got nothing to do with this report and there's no report level set specified, so it's behaving in the example we saw previously whereas if, as if there's no level at all. So hopefully that makes some sense and you can uh, see how that works. All right, now let's move on to grouping. Um, so the first type of grouping I want to show you is ending fact, okay? And I think the best way to demonstrate that is with an inventory metric, okay? Now, typically when you're looking at inventory, you'll, your table can be at the day level, the week level, the month level, right? But when you're looking at inventory across time, you know, if you're looking at a specific month or, or year even, you really only care about the ending snapshot, right? So if you're looking at the month of or the year of 2015, you really don't you're not you're not going to add the, add up all the inventory of 2015 because it's a snapshot, right? So you really only care where you finished, where your inventory levels were when you finished 2017. Okay? So the way you would do that is you would choose grouping ending fact. Okay? Now let me go ahead and show you how this works. So let's close this and let's run the report. Okay, so here I have a simple filter for the year 2015 and it says my ending inventory was 15,000 units. Okay, but to show you how this is doing this behind the scenes, let's take a look at the SQL. Okay, so as you can see, it's creating a temporary table. Okay, it's taking the year, the month, and summing the inventory for that particular month, for that particular year, okay, grouping by year and month. Okay, great. So, but if you scroll down a little bit more, 
you'll see what it actually ends up doing is it takes the max month. So to produce that 15,000 units, right, it has to add up the units for that particular point of time across the year, but it will take the max month. So the last month of 2015. So that is, in effect, how you, where your inventory, inventory levels were when you ended 2015. Okay, so I hope that makes sense and you see how that works. That is ending fact. The next type of grouping option I want to show you is when you set grouping to none. Okay, so if you take a look at the metric I have on the screen here, same thing, target of region. Filtering, we'll leave that standard for now. We'll get into that later. But grouping, will set to none. Now let's take a look and see what this looks like on a report. Go ahead and run this. Okay, so on this report, particular report, I have three metrics, okay? Our standard report level metric. And as you can see, it's di we've seen this before. It's dynamically aggregating based on what's on my report template, okay? Now the metric in the middle, we've also seen this before, this is where I set the target to region, left the grouping standard and the filtering standard, and as you can see, it is grouping by region and repeating that value for each call center, okay, because the target was set to region. Now, the metric on the right here, we've left the filtering standard, however, we've set the grouping to none. Now, as you can see, it's taking the total for all the regions, okay, and repeating that for every row because we told it do not group by region. Therefore, it's going to create produce one total and repeat that value for each row because we told it not to group on region. So hopefully now you can see how that works. That is grouping none. Okay, now let's talk about filtering. So the first type of filtering we're going to talk about is absolute filtering. Okay, now if you look at the metric on the left here, this is the target of region with the filtering standard and grouping standard. I'm going to leave this on the report and add this to the report just to show you what it looks like in comparison to when we set a metric to filtering absolute. Okay, so if you look at the metric on the right, target of region, filtering absolute, and we'll leave the grouping as standard. So let's take a look at the report now. Okay, so here's the report. The first metric is again your default metric with the report level. The metric in the middle is filtering standard, grouping standard. This is what we've seen before. Okay, now the metric on the right, this is where we set filtering to absolute and grouping to standard. Now in order to explain the differences here, you might, well you might have already seen the difference here. If you look at this row for Boston, filtering standard, grouping standard is 507,000. And using the, metric, the first metric, you can see that is indeed the total for Boston, 507,000. They match. But if you look at the metric with, where the filtering is set to absolute, you'll see it's 2.8 million. Well, why is that? Well, when we're talking about filtering, let's go up and look at the filter here. Okay, so we have a filter of, with the years 2015. Okay. We're filtering for three regions, but the call center, we're taking everything except New York, okay? That's why in the Northeast region, you only see Boston, because New York's being filtered out. However, since we set the filtering to absolute for this metric here, it is going effectively disregarding this filter, okay? And it's giving you 2.8 million, so it is giving you the total for all the re call centers in the Northeast region regardless of what you've specified in the filter here. Okay, so that is absolute filtering. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, next let's look at what happens when you set the filtering to ignore. Now if you take a look at the screen here, what I've done is I've set the target to the entire time hierarchy. Okay, and I wanted to show this for a specific reason. You don't only have to add individual attributes to the level. 
you can also specify an entire hierarchy and set the filtering and grouping for that whole hierarchy, okay? And that's what I've done here, okay? And set the filtering to ignore. Now let's take a look at the report. Okay, go ahead and run this. All right, now, let's first, let's look at our filter. So our filter here, simple filter for the year, where the year equals 2015. Now, the first metric is again our default report level metric, and that is taking into consideration our filter and dynamically aggregating based on what is on a report template. So in this case, it's category. So books has about 800,000, electrics about it, electronics about 8 million, movies about 1.3 million, and so on. Now the middle metric is filtering standard grouping standard, okay? And as you can see, that matches the default report level, okay? However, the metric on the right is set to the target of the entire time hierarchy again, only we set the filtering to ignore. So what that's going to do is, the reason why these values are so much higher than where the filtering is set to standard is because it is effectively ignoring our filter on year. Okay, So this is giving you the total revenue for these categories for all of time. Okay, And that'll do it for level metrics. Um, you now, you may have noticed I didn't go into filtering none, grouping none. I may end up making another episode on this where I go into a little bit more detail. Uh, but this definitely, definitely covers the basics. So let me know what you think in the comments. All right, so that'll do it. This is a new channel. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell. Uh, i got a couple cool things coming up. SDK and predictive analytics with MicroStrategy. Check me out on jamestechtips.com for more BI-related content. And thanks for watching.